Stand with us in Bill O'Reilly in the Miller Time segment tonight. Our pal Dennis has been closely watching how Sarah Palin's book is being marketed. Oprah has the first interview. And Mr. Miller joins us now from Los Angeles. So you're going to read this book, Going Rogue? You've been going rogue your whole life, have you not? Well, I don't think Sarah Palin is going rogue anymore. Uh, listen, I, I, you listen, I like Oprah. She's one of my neighbors. She seems like a nice gal. But, you know, let's face facts. Sarah Palin always says, I'm not going to play the game. And uh, Oprah Winfrey show is the center of the game. It's tough to go rogue when you're at zero zero on the number line, and she's right in the belly of the the beast there. Yeah, Oprah but that's a smart like... move. That's a smart move to go on that show. Oprah gets you get your book to number one, and in a heartbeat, Oprah's not going to give her a hard time. She's going to be very nice to Sarah Palin. Palin's going to be. I able think to it's do a. Something. I think it's a smart move as far as selling books. I don't know that uh, I'm going to think of her as a rogue anymore. I think of Oprah's show as sort of like a cathartic ATM. You step up, you countersign your tale of woe, you push it in and it spits some greenbacks. But I understand the transaction, but I'm saying if you're really going to go rogue, if you're really going to push that, this is not rogue to me. This is some concession that she's whooped. I don't think she is going to run for the presidency. You know, it would be interesting about this book, whether she tells the truth or not, Sarah Palin, in the sense that She's got some really good stories. I mean, let's face it, Katie Couric, uh, Charles Gibson, Saturday Night Live, she was on there. Uh, what the real deal was with McCain. I mean, that book could just be fascinating if Sarah Palin lets it fly. What are the odds of that happening? It all comes down to whether she wants another book or the White House. If she wants the White House, she'll play it close to the vest. If she wants another book, she'll spill it all and become the next Jackie Suzanne. Okay. Uh, Balloon Boy. Now, uh, we have been covering this story because of the massive betrayal. You know, you're looking at this thing. Millions of Americans were hoping there was no boy there, and that turned out to be true. But, you know, in the, in the reportage, the boy could have been killed, and people were emotionally invested and sitting there watching it. And then there's a massive fraud. So how did you, uh, how did you process that? Well, listen, Dante, uh, the great author, had the theory of symbolic retribution. Your, your afterlife is predicated on what you did in real life. If there's any truth to that, and I always think of it as some sort of uh, retributive karma, I think this guy will go to the 10th concentric circle of hell, where life is as usual, but there's never, ever a TV camera there. Because <laughs> this is a bad, bad parent. This is a saucer yeah. trash parent. And you know something? Uh, in, in a real world, somebody would just whoop him uh, and, you know, come somebody around tried. and just sock him in the nose. Yeah, somebody tried. Huh? There was a little brawl outside his house. Yeah, I, I agree with you. You know, when, and I don't think Americans could be wrong on this, but there are a lot of parents who manipulate their children who, you know, for reasons, many, many reasons, they live through their children's sporting activities. Uh, they tell their they're mad at their spouse. They're trying to manipulate the child to do this and that about the spouse. You know, the kid deserves a childhood. And to put a kid in a massive con like this, because as the kid said on uh, CNN, hey, you know, the whole con was laid out for the kid, and he just forgot the script and then told the truth, and it just blew it up. Listen, this guy is a massive, massive loser. And the woman looks a little bullied to me. And the kids look a little freaked out. And if there was any, uh, if there was any karma in the universe, they would give everybody in his neighborhood a show except him. So he had to live right in the middle of it <laughs> and be the only one not included. But how He's stupid. a loser. I know. How stupid do you be to think you can pull off a fraud like this and then get a reality show? Look, the Octo Mom pulled it off. The Oct but, again, what, what is her show? It means nothing. And now there's 14 babies that are at risk. But she Bill, pulled the it only off. reason the Octomom, the only reason the Octomom got her own show is she could deliver an audience of 14 people. That's right. But this guy, how he thought he could get away with this, I, I, it's just <laughs> staggering. Okay, his now, head is emptier <clears throat> than that balloon. That's how. His head is more lightweight than that Mylar balloon. I know. What an idiot. Now, on your radio program, you've had a lot of callers on the Fox News White House uh, brouhaha. So what's yeah. the consensus? Uh, I don't know about them, but I have a feeling there's a sign on Barack Obama's desk that says the buck starts here. And I love the fact that every week he trundles out, 
Axelrod and Emmanuel like Tweedledum and Tweedlerom, and they go out there and they they uh, tweak the nerds, I guess, in their book. It's like the jock who hangs the rest of us up in our locker with a nuclear wedgie. What next? They're going to issue a position paper on who's hotter, Betty or Veronica? They're acting like little kids. They've decided to surge against Fox, but not in Afghanistan. And at some point, when people say, doesn't this remind you of the Kennedy presidency? I say, you got the decade right. You got the wrong pres. This is Nixonian. I look at Axelrod, and I look at Rahm Emanuel, and Rahm Emanuel might as well be wearing a brush cut like H.R. Haldeman, and Axelrod should just save the stash, and he would look like Ehrlichman, because that's who they remind me of. They're, 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 uh, Barack Obama has rabbit ears. It's like in baseball. You remember that guy? You could get under his skin from the dugout. You could flip him out a little. He hears too much. He's got rabbit ears. Okay, so uh, what you're saying is that if the pitcher's on the mound and you're going, hey, you're a bum, that's your boy, and then the pitcher's looking at you and breaking concentration, and then he throws a ball and he gets it over the fence, that's Barack Obama. Any kind of criticism, he reacts personally to it. Uh, it's more than that. You have to step up to the dugout, and for, to please him, you have to say, each of your pitches is the greatest pitch I've ever seen in my life, or he gets rattled. So now, Miller, I think I, he's got rabbit ears. I want you and I to go have lunch with Barack Obama. You think we can do that? Would you do that if I can set it up? I'm not interested. Come I, on. Guy, Free you lunch. Go. You go. No, I want you there. I'm, it doesn't interest me. I, if, I, I don't like intractable people. I like people you can talk to. I want you he's to tell him about Dante. Way. You can tell him about Dante. Well, <laughs> he can stand to study a little Dante because symbolic retribution <laughs> and I'm gonna do makes that, more Miller. sense. It makes more sense than Obamacare. I'm going to get you, you and me. We're going to go to lunch with him.